In this tip, I'm going to show you how to build a ternary graph. A ternary graph requires three metrics, plotted as a triangle, where the sum of all three variables adds up to a constant. You can think of it as a three-dimensional scatter plot. Each dimension is plotted based on its relative variance on a scale of 1 to 100 that each metric has compared to the largest value within that dimension. This works similar to a parallel coordinates chart. A value plotted near the top would indicate a weighting towards the variable at the top. Likewise, for the bottom right, a variable plotted there would indicate a weighting toward the variable that was plotted on the bottom right. In the middle of all these would indicate that the variable is evenly weighted. Let's see how we go about building one of these. I've connected to a car, sample car sales database, which I will link to in the description. The first thing we want to do is we want to build our calculations. So I'm going to start by creating a new calculated field. And for this example, I'm going to call this one my bottom left. And the calculation, I'm going to start with the, the average discount. So I'm going to write this as a table calculation. It's going to be the average discount minus the window min of the average discount divided by, so that's the entire numerator, and then I want to divide that by the window max of the average discount minus the window min of the average discount. And this is ex exactly how a parallel coordinates chart works. We're just trying to find the relative range of each measure within the dimension. So let's hit OK. Let's duplicate that calculation. And I'm now going to create one for my bottom right. This time, I want to look at the average sale price. So I'm just going to simply replace discount with sale price. and hit OK. I'm going to duplicate again, and this one I'm going to call my top. And this time I'm going to use the average max speed. So I'm going to simply replace sales price with max speed in each, of the, in each place where sales price is in the calculation. Now that we have those, we need to tell Tableau how to draw the triangle. So we're going to create another calculated field, and I'm going to call this one X. This is the field that's going to go in my columns. I want to make sure that the whole function, or the whole value, turns into a zero if I get an invalid value, meaning it would put it at the bottom of the scale. So I want to start by multiplying 0 0.5 times, and I want to do two times the bottom right, plus the top. So it's going to multiply the bottom right times 2 and then add the top to that. I'm then going to divide by the sum of bottom right plus bottom left plus top. OK, and that's, that's our calculation for the x. Let's hit OK. And let's create another calculated field for the y. This is what's going to go in my rows. So again, I want to make sure that the whole function returns 0 if there's an invalid value. So I want to start with a couple of brackets. And I'm going to do the square root of 3, divide that by 2. And I'm going to multiply that by the top. And let's close off those brackets. And then I'm going to divide that by the same aggregation, the bottom right, bottom left, plus the bottom right, plus the top. OK, and we get a valid calculation. That means sometimes it can be difficult to get all of your brackets working correctly, but it looks like we did a pretty good job in this case. Let's hit OK. Let's put X on the columns. 
and y on the rows. And we get a single dot at 0 and 0 because we haven't told Tableau how to split up the view. So let's say we want to split it up by model of the car. Let's put model onto detail. And notice it looks like I still have one dot, but if I lasso it, I actually have 957. That's because I need to tell my table calculation to compute using model. And on the Y, do the same thing. Compute using model. And now we have that nice little distribution. You can almost see it's taking the shape of a triangle. Now we want that triangle to be in the background. So to do that, we want to go up to Map, Background Images, and then pick your data source. I'm going to add an image. I'm going to give it the name Triangle. And I need to find a visualization that I already created. You can easily build these in PowerPoint. And I want it to go, because my scale of my calculations goes from 0 to 1, I want my axes to go from 0 to 1. Let's hit OK. And notice how the triangle doesn't fit. Well, that's because my x and my y are not set up to go all the way from 0 to 1. So I'm going to edit each axis. I'm going to choose fixed. I'm going to start it at, let's say, minus 0 0.05. And I'm going to end it at 1.05. Let's do the same thing for our x. Just set it to fixed. Let's make it minus 0 0.05 and 1.05. And now we see everything fits nicely into a triangle. To clean it up, I'm going to change my mark type to a circle. I'm going to remove both the border and the halo. And I'm going to reduce the opacity so we can see the concentrations a bit better. Now, when you hover over a mark, you can see uh, you can see the model, but you see these weird numbers for the X and the Y. Those don't really mean a whole lot to the user because those are really just the position that we're placing them in. So I'm going to remove each of the X and the Y from the tooltip, and now we just have the model. Well, the three measures that we looked at were the average discount. So I'm going to right-click and drag average discount to detail, or sorry, discount to detail, and pick average. I'm going to right click and drag sales price to the detail shelf and pick average. And I'm going to right click and drag max speed and make that an average. And now we can see in our, in our tooltip the average discount, the average sale price, and the average max speed. Now if I want to make this tooltip look a bit better, I'm going to go ahead and set the default number, uh, the default aggregation for our three fields. So sale price, max speed, and discount. Right click on those, default properties, aggregation, and average. And now you'll see the, the, the labels inside of the tooltip now just say discount, sale price, and max. I'm also going to set the default number format for my discount to be a percentage to one decimal place. And there we go. So that looks pretty good. So the last thing I'm going to do is clean up the view. So I'm going to format the view. I'm going to go to my lines. I'm going to turn my grid lines on and back off. Turn my zero lines off and turn my axis rulers off. I'm going to then go up to my X field on the columns and uncheck show header. And same thing for my Y field, uncheck show header. And now we have a nice looking triangle. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that the users know what each of these fields is on the corner. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add labels to each of these corners. So our top, if we go back into our calculation, our top is our max speed. So I'm just going to right click somewhere above the top of the triangle, choose annotate an area. And I'm going to just call this top speed and hit OK. Maybe shrink it up a bit. And then I'm going to right click on it and format, set the shading to none, and change the line to none. OK, let's now go to the right side, annotate area, and our right hand side, I need to go back and double check what our right hand side is. Our right hand side is our average sale price. So I'm going to annotate that area or sorry, the bottom left would be our average discount. So average discount, getting my left and right mixed up. 
okay? And I can make that a bit smaller maybe. And then the last one is over here on the bottom right. So annotate area, and this would be average sale price. All right, and you'll notice that I can't really move these uh, move these over on. Right now they're overlapping the view. So again, I'm gonna format each of my annotations. Okay, and uh, you could maybe just move the mark or move the annotation up a bit or something like that, or you can also give it additional space left to right. So if I wanna give it additional space, I'm gonna show the header for X again. And I'm going to just change the, the, the start to be maybe, let's try minus uh, 0.1 to 1.1. Let's see if that gives us more room. So now I can drag my average sale price over here, and that looks a bit better. But you can play around with it until you get it kind of the size that you like. Same thing with our average discount. I want to make sure discount is all on one line. Let's move that over, and we get something like that. So that's it. I hope you found that useful. Have a great day.